guys, you got a pack in the pool. Yeah, so we got and just fix it as good as new. Good plan, buddy. <laughs> as my helper was saying there, guys, we found a crack in the pool. So the plaster company, once they did their hydro blasting, that's what uh, has caused all the the demo on the finish here that you see here. Hydro blaster is really just a super powerful pressure washer. I think it blasts around 40,000 PSI and just lets them blast off all the uh, existing plaster finish or most of it at least. Um, as they did that, we uncovered a crack, a vertical crack here in the pool. So you can see basically it starts about right here and runs all the way up. Um, wasn't sure if this was truly structural at first, but as we look up on top of the bond beam, we can actually see the crack runs across the top of the bond beam as well. And then I started to dig out behind the pool. Uh, since we have our deck removed now, we're actually able to do this, which is nice. And hopefully you can see here that crack continues to run run down the back of the wall too, indicating that that crack actually is going through the structure of the pool. So today we're going to go through a number of steps to make a repair on this crack. And hopefully we can get it done so that the plaster company can pick their work back up this coming week. Um, it's a few different, well, a few, there's probably a lot of different ways that people may go about trying to repair a crack in a pool. Um, common way is to do an epoxy injection. Um, a lot of people call it an injection, even though many times they're kind of just pasting it over the crack. They make different types of staple products. Some of them are described as being um, Kevlar or, uh, um, you know, different types of, of kind of materials they make staples out of. There's a product out there called Torque Lock that is a steel structural staple that allows you to actually apply torqued pressure to hold the crack together. So that's the product that I'm choosing to use to make the repair on this crack. Uh, I have them on order. They're supposed to be delivered today. So we're going to go ahead and start prepping this area to install those staples once they show up. So the steps we're going to go through, one, I'm going to get uh, the demo hammer out and bust down through the rest of this existing plaster back to the gunite just kind of around this crack i want to expose it more so we can get um better visual on the crack and see what's going on and then what we're going to do uh, once the those structural torque lock staples arrive um i'll be able to talk you through those a little bit more once we actually have them in our hands but basically there's two different sizes that we're going to use one is six inches wide and another is three inches wide and the installation instructions state to kind of space them out every foot or so. I think we're going to go about every eight inches just because this crack is a little bit smaller. And I'd like to get at least four staples on it. So what we'll do then is take our uh, an angle grinder with uh, like a, a diamond blade on it so we can cut through the concrete here. And we're basically going to cut out a recess so that we can put those staples in it. We'll then drill into the pool wall with two half inch holes and that's where we'll use some epoxy then to set the studs that hold the staple in place. So this, that'll make more sense once we have the product in hand and I can kind of point to and explain um, using the product exactly what we're going to do. So we'll get set up and just kind of show you the steps we go through here. But first off, we're going to get the demo hammer out, um, get down to more of an exposed gunite surface here. Uh, see what we can see and then we'll hopefully get the staples delivered today and we'll we'll be able to talk through exactly how we're going to install those then as far as just the crack itself i'm probably going to use an epoxy or a urethane um, to try to inject or you know apply inside that crack a little bit and then we'll cover the whole area with the hydraulic cement once we're finished also and then as the plaster company comes back their tile guys actually use a waterproofing membrane so i'm going to have them just coat this area once we're done with our repair work with that same membrane that they'll use behind the tile and hopefully we're in good shape and don't have any issues with it um but we'll we'll see here so we'll get set up uh let you watch what we're what we're doing as we have any kind of moments that need better description i'll um, pick the camera up here again and talk you guys through it all right let's get started Okay, so first step we're going to use is uh, just this demo hammer, the chisel tip on it. And basically my goal here is just to come out from the crack and just try to further chip off this uh, rest of the plaster that 
when the plaster crew is using their hydro blaster, it just didn't blow this, this section of it off. So we're just gonna kind of start here, work our way down and see if we can get down to a little bit more of a gunite exposure. Um, just that, that way as we're applying our staples, applying hydraulic cement, anything else, we're doing it on the actual gunite instead of on the, the existing plaster that was left on here. So uh, I'm gonna put on some goggles, throw on some gloves, and just start chipping into this and hopefully it goes pretty quick. Uh, we'll just kind of see. So here we go. Okay, so we've kind of cleaned up the area here more. Uh, you can see the crack pretty good. Um, it's definitely wider and more pronounced at the top and it starts getting, you know, less and less as we get down towards the, the bottom of the pool where it starts to make the curve into the actual floor. And it looks like it kind of stops somewhere in this area, which is kind of good. So um, glad it's not continuing to go, go on down around the curve and onto the floor. So what we're going to do now is use a crack chaser. And what that is is a special blade that I've got on a four inch angle grinder here. Um, this is just an Amazon special. It's pretty cheap. Um, you know, got it in a day or two after ordering it. So if, if it just works for this crack, um, that's fine, but we'll see actually how, how well it works for us. Um, and the crack chaser blade, you can see it gets wider. So it's, you know, you can get it in the crack and then it gets wider as you go up towards the center of the blade. So what this will let us do is, um, I've actually never used one. So one, we're going to see how good I can do it on the first try here. Uh, we'll kind of get into the crack and then the, the chasing aspect of it is supposed to just kind of help walk you through the crack and we'll see if we can just widen this out a little bit. Uh, if this doesn't work, I've got a few other blades that we may just, you know, kind of V in and cut into it a little bit more. Uh, we'll see what this does for us though. So this is going to be pretty loud. Um, it's probably going to make a lot of dust that you don't want to breathe in. So when you're doing any cutting like this, grinding, Make sure you put on a mask, put on your eye protection. Um, ear protection is probably good too. So uh, get the camera set up here and we'll see. We'll kind of just kind of see how well this goes. Okay. So wow, that actually worked pretty good. Seemed like it followed the crack really well, actually, especially as I got down here to the bottom. You can see it kind of swooped around there. Um, maybe there's a better technique than what I used there, but um, it seemed to work pretty well for me. I can actually tell it did eat into the blade some. And you can see it was kind of catching and jumping on me a little bit there, so maybe I was putting too much pressure at times. Um, so it can be dangerous, right, as it's jumping or kicking back at you. So you do want to be pretty careful and make sure you're confident in what you're doing here. Um, so with that crack widened up, as we get the staples installed later, we'll be able to fill this crack probably with an epoxy or a urethane or something. I'm not sure exactly what I want to use for it yet, but uh, I'm going to get this hosed off, cleaned up. Um, we'll do another just kind of visual inspection on it, see if we want to grind in any more anywhere, do anything further. So, um, yeah, it worked pretty good. Um, no, I got to get my smoke down into the water. Oh, okay. Well, you keep working down there and I'll keep working up here, okay? Okay. All right. <clears> Hi <throat> right, guys, so UPS man finally came. Uh, we've got the crack still just prepared here. We've been waiting all day doing other stuff, working on plumbing and a few other things here. So, um, so what we ordered from Torque Lock is their, I think it's called the TL10 kit. So it's the smallest kit they have. 10 means it'll allow you to repair a 10 foot crack or, you know, 10 feet of crack doesn't have to be the same one so here's what it comes with they give you a tube of anchoring epoxy so this is a two-part epoxy with a mixing tube it'll go in a standard caulk gun and you'll use that to set the studs in uh, for the actual staples it then comes with five three inch steel staples so each of the staples have one stud I'll say riveted connected to it so you get the five three inch and then five studs with what makes this thing so effective um, is the stud with this circular 
I don't know, head on it and the cutout here. And this, once it's set up, this is what you actually torque. So we're looking at it upside down here, but that's what you actually put your torque wrench in and tighten this thing down. So it's putting, you know, a specific amount of pressure holding the crack or pulling it together. So we got five three inch staples. Um, they send you a template. So you'll see us using this here in a second. So you use the templates. Once you figure out where you want to put your three inch or six inch staple, you use the corresponding template. You can then trace around it. You can mark your, the two holes that you'll need to drill for the studs. And this will allow us to cut it out, drill the holes and get the staples ready to be installed. So it's nice they send that with it. Um, so you got the template for the six inch staple. Got again, another five of the six inch staple. Same setup as the three, just these are longer. Um, so you can kind of see what we have here. It comes with a front and back printed instruction. You can find the same document, the instruction on their website. From shipping, this one kind of got a little beat up. It was wrapped around the staples inside a, a box. So it was all packaged pretty well, actually. This just got a little bit beat up. So that's everything we got in the kit. So now what we're gonna do is figure out exactly where we wanna put the staples on the wall. And here what I think we're gonna do, I think I wanna put a six inch staple on top, okay? And then we'll alternate to a three inch staple, and then another six inch staple, and then at the bottom of the crack, we'll do another three inch staple. So I'm gonna use four total staples on this crack. Per the instructions, the spacing um, is noted to be, or should be 12 inches between each staple. We're gonna be probably about eight inches between each staple just because of the, the length of our crack here. And I, I do wanna have four on there. And I'm gonna, I've decided to start with a six inch on top because the crack is more pronounced at the top and then it gets kind of shallower and less pronounced as we went down. So um, I'd like to have the full six inch on top here then the three, six, and three. So next step is here, we're gonna go ahead and use the templates to mark out exactly where we want the staples to go. We'll then use our angle grinder with a, just a diamond blade to cut out around that um, template mark that we make. We'll use a hammer drill with a half inch uh, carbide bit on it to drill four inches into the concrete. That'll give us plenty of room to, re to you know, epoxy in the studs on each staple. So we'll get set up here and start getting that knocked out here. Um, so stay with us, we'll get set up. Okay, so got, a lay got our layouts here. Hopefully you can see them. I took a red Sharpie and used the templates, traced around them. So I got a six inch, three inch, six inch, and then a three inch. So the four in total. So now that we've got them traced, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take angle grinder with just uh, another cheap Amazon special blade for concrete masonry use. It can be dry or wet, use dry or wet. And uh, I may just start with a smaller three inch one right here. And I'll just try to cut in a couple inches around you know, what we marked out. And then I'll make a couple additional cuts, really just so that it makes it a little bit, a little bit easier to chip out. Um, that's kind of how the torque lock instructional videos um, indicate you should do it, or they suggest you should do that. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'll set the camera up on a little tripod here. Um, hopefully you'll be able to kind of see, but we'll go ahead and get this one cut out, and then we'll chip it out and see what the result is. So I'd say it went pretty well. Um, I may chip out a little bit more just to kind of even it out a little bit. Get some of that loose stuff out of there. I'll clean it all up real good, but 
we got plenty of room to recess our staple in there. Um, I'll get it cleaned up. I'll probably go ahead and do that same thing to the other three. I won't film that just to keep the video from getting way too long here. But once I get the other ones chipped out, just like we did this one, we'll come back and drill our half inch holes for the studs. So we'll pick it back up and show you guys that once we get these other ones prepped. Okay, we got all four recesses chipped out for the staples. Uh, went ahead and hosed it off, cleaned it off a little bit. So what we're gonna do next is drill the half inch holes to receive the studs. So the templates that Torque Lock sends you have two holes in the six inch and the three inch. So I've gone ahead and kind of placed them in the hole. I've taken a red Sharpie and just marked the spot where we need to drill our holes. So what we're gonna use to do that, our hammer drill with a half inch, this is an SDS Max drill. So we've got corresponding SDS Max carbide tipped blade, or uh, excuse me, uh, bit. So we'll use this. Um, I'll look at the instructions again real quick here. I think it says to drill in a couple of inches um, you know, you want to be able to fully recess the studs and have enough room for your epoxy to, to fill around them and behind them a little bit to hold them in there. So I'll probably take my Sharpie and mark a little spot on the, on the, the bit just so I know how deep to go. If you go over, that's fine. If you go under, well, you don't want to do that. So err on the side of going over. So drill a little deeper, um, if you're, you know, worried about it. So we'll get set up. I'll just show drilling a couple of the holes. Uh, we'll get them all knocked out here and then we should be getting pretty close to being ready for epoxy and getting the staples set. <clears throat> okay, so the instructions actually say to drill four inches deep, but the instructions say to drill before you cut out these recesses. So I've just measured, I'm just gonna cut three inches deep now because we're in, I don't know, a good inch in here. Um, the studs themselves are just a little over two inches so that'll just give us a little breathing room and a little place to fill in some of the epoxy, um, pack it in and let it set up some more. So we'll go ahead and try to drill these. Um, hopefully the bit doesn't try to bounce around on us too much, because um, I do want to be a, you know as precise as we can, because um, the studs aren't going to have much you know play in them necessarily, so um, we'll uh, give it a go here and see what happens. That's where a three inch staple will go. So let's just see. So I need to get all the stuff cleaned out of there, but I won't push them in all the way, but looks like this should work out just fine for us. Um, as we get ready to actually install them, the torque lock instructional videos show this too. We'll probably take a hammer. That way we can really get these, you know, recessed in and set just where we want them. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of the holes drilled out. Um, it's getting later in the evening here, so I don't know if we'll do the epoxy tonight or if we'll do it tomorrow morning. But the next step is to take that two-part epoxy. <clears throat> and after we clean out the, the drill holes, we'll use this two-part anchoring epoxy, fill the holes up, insert the studs and the plate in, being careful not to get any of the epoxy on the plate because as we tighten this thing up, that plate needs to be able to move, as does this cam on the stud on this side. So um, I don't know if we'll get to, the, to that tonight or in the morning, but regardless, I'll get the rest of these holes drilled and we'll pick it back up and that'll be our next step. All right, guys, here we are the next morning, ready to get the staples installed. <clears throat> so quick walkthrough of what we're gonna do. Uh, the kit comes with a two-part epoxy. I already talked about that. So this just goes in standard caulk gun it's got a mixing tip that you put on the end of it so you know inside the tube are two different um, you know part one and a part two of the epoxy this tip actually mixes it as it dispenses from the tube uh, so we'll get this set up it says working time is around 15 minutes or so uh, I don't know between 15 and 20 minutes so what I plan to do is for the video here, we'll get the epoxy in this one three inch staple 
Okay, so we'll fill the holes about two thirds of the way full. We'll then pretty quickly take the staple and the cam, and obviously each of the studs go into one of the holes that we've drilled and cleaned out. These are, the holes are all dry. And as you insert it, so this one's gonna slide in pretty, pretty good, but a couple things here. If it kind of jams up on you, you can take a hammer, tap it in, okay? This is a hammer I made in shop class when I was, uh, I don't know, 15 years old. So this has uh, been a really great hammer. I've used it a ton over the years, surprisingly. Um, so you get it tapped in, and the orientation of the cam, you want it such that the square is facing to the inside of the staple, okay? And then the instructions say to let the epoxy set up. And I kind of don't get this part, because it seems like as the epoxy sets up, it's gonna lock this, the stud of the cam in place, but I guess that's the intention. And then as you turn it, you know, that's orienting the stud to put more pressure and pull the crack together um, in the staple itself. So uh, we'll follow the instructions. I really read on their website, read on the printed instructions. It's pretty specific to let the epoxy set up. It does warn though, not to let the epoxy ooze out and ooze into the cam or onto the plate itself. So I'll probably be a little careful and not overfilling the holes so that it's not just oozing out everywhere on us. So once that epoxy sets up for maybe 15, 20 minutes, we're gonna take a torque wrench. So this is a 3 8 torque wrench. Um, I think it goes from 10 to 80 pounds, uh, foot pounds. And you wanna set your torque wrench, if your pool's a gunite pool, you wanna set your torque wrench to 22 pounds. So I've already made that adjustment on here. I've got a 3 8 extension on here so I can get into the, the cam easier. And here, let me grab a loose cam. The way this works is you don't need a socket or anything like that. Just the 3 8 ratchet um, head on there will go right into that square cutout on the cam. And then you'll torque it clockwise until you hit that 22 pounds, 22 foot pounds of, of torque. So once we get it in here, we'll, we'll go ahead and make that, use the torque wrench to get it torqued down. Um, and basically that's the end of the installation or that completes the installation of the staples. So let me go ahead and um, pause the video. I'll get the epoxy ready to go because I want to get this one in just to show you guys. And then I'm going to quickly try to get the other three installed too before my mixing tube on the epoxy, um, before it sets up in there and I can't use it anymore. So uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, hopefully you can see okay from this angle on the camera and we'll show you what we're going to do. So here we'll go ahead and start. In this hole, so I'm just injecting some of the epoxy into the hole here. I think we've got enough in there. So I, again, I don't want to overfill these because I don't want to have to mess with a bunch of kind of ooze out, spill out. So let's see. Take our three inch staple. Get our cam here lined up so that the square is pointing to the inside of the staple. material in there is really keeping it from sliding right in like it was before, so we'll kind of work it here a little bit. Okay. There we've got it recessed in there. Um, you can see just a tiny bit of, of epoxy there. I think we're okay with it though. 
So we'll let that set up here. I'll probably cut the camera here. I'll work on getting the other ones installed real quick, just like we, we did this one. And then we'll come back and we'll get this guy torqued down, hopefully to that 22 foot pounds of pressure. And basically that'll complete our installation of the torque lock staples. So let me get the other three installed here real quick. We'll come back and show us torquing this one down. Um, hopefully we have good luck with that part. All right, so we've got all four of them installed. Um, so here's the one we did, you know, on camera with you guys. You can see this one went in good because the square cutout's pointing directly, you know, towards the center of the staple. The other ones I had to finagle with a little bit. So you can see some of them are a little bit offset. Um, I think we'll still be able to torque them down fine from that position. And keep in mind that you're turning them clockwise. So as you, if you do have to go off center, you know, probably orient them orient them a little bit further clockwise so that when you torque them down you're just adding pressure at that point so i'm just gonna let these sit for a few more minutes let that epoxy set up um, a bit more and then we'll go ahead and torque them down <clears throat> all right guys let's see if we can finish this up got the torque wrench 3 8 drive 3 8 extension on it no bit or a uh, socket or anything needed this just receives right into the square hole on the torque lock cam Got it adjusted to 22 foot-pounds of torque. Um, so I have not tried this at all yet. So we'll go ahead and get it inserted here into, and we'll start torquing this down. There we go. Um, maybe I glossed over it there, but as we were tightening this down, I don't know if you'll be able to hear, kind of see it on the on the video here. So you can hear that click. So if you haven't used a torque wrench before, that's typically how it indicates to you that it's reached the, uh, the set torque um, amount of foot-pound of pressure. So it'll just kind of click, and that lets you know that, hey, I'm, I'm fully torqued, good to go here. So uh, we'll do the other ones here, get this job knocked out, and move on with the rest of the pool renovation. All right guys, last step here. <clears throat> um, off camera, I did go ahead and fill in with the rest of that epoxy I had in the tube just to get it used up. Uh, just filled in the, the crack uh, all the way up and down here. Um, I just took a hose and just kind of misted some water over this area. And the reason I did that is because we're just about ready to, to pack in with our hydraulic cement. And whenever you're bonding, you know, concrete to concrete, it's better if the surface is a little bit um, a little bit moist. So the plan here is um, I'm going to mix up some hydraulic cement, come back, and I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to just take my hand and just pack in the hydraulic cement um, as best I can, or fully around the staple, all around the outside area that we've that we've busted out. And because the hydraulic cement sets up so quick, especially today because it's pretty warm out, I'm probably going to have to do it in batches, unfortunately. So I'm going to mix up enough or I th hopefully enough that I can cover this bottom area and then I'll have to go mix up a little bit more and kind of work my way up the wall. So hopefully I can do it fast enough where we are still able to get a pretty good bond. Um, so really what you'll see me do is pack in the hydraulic cement down here starting at the bottom and we'll just kind of work our way up. So let me get it mixed up, come right back and we'll, we'll start to finish this job up. Okay, I've got it mixed up here and uh, really I'm just gonna take my hand and just start Really just shoving it all around in here. Since we're replastering the pool itself, don't have to be too careful about the application here. Which is which is nice. It's actually already kind of starting to sit up on me, starting to firm up.
Okay, so first batch there. I'm gonna run up and mix another batch real quick. Okay, got our next batch here. Just the camera up a little bit. Hopefully you can kind of see. So here we'll just start doing the same thing. That was kind of a sprint to get that stuff on there. I mean, it really sets up quick, but um, this is kind of the end of my work here. So when my plasterers come, I believe the, behind the tiles in a few spots, they'll put a waterproofing membrane. So I'm gonna ask them to go ahead and just cover this area with, with that membrane too, just a little added layer of protection here. And they should just be able to finish over it. And hopefully we never know this was here and never see any um, you know, bleed through of the repair through the new finish. So hopefully you found this video a little bit interesting and helpful. Um, again, the main product we use here was the Torque Lock uh, staple made for this type of application. If you have any questions or comments, you know, please leave them. Um, if you see something that we've done that's maybe you disagree with or you don't think we did it right, you know, let us know that. Um, that way other people watching these videos can learn from that. But uh, check out our channel, check out our other videos, and thank you very much.